All right, guys, I'm gonna talk about like fish stocking in certain areas and um, you guys can uh, disagree with me and correct me in the comments if you don't agree, but Wisconsin seems to be obsessed with stocking walleye, like literally everywhere, everywhere they can, even in environments where I don't think um, walleye will do well. I'll take two examples. One is the Manesha River, the Marshall Mill Pond area. I know they've tried to stock walleye in there. That has not gone well because I've not, never heard of anyone catching any walleye in there, nor have I seen one myself the various times I've fished it. The other one, I've just got informed, the Sugar River Race through Broadhead, not the wild part of the river, which, by the way, is much better for fishing, but the um, like calm channel that goes through town, and they're trying to stock walleye in there. I'm also going to give a proposal of what you possibly could stock there. I think, like, first of all, I think, like, bass do decently, maybe pike, um, and I think they're stocking those as well, but I think you should, like, stop trying to stock walleye in those places, because as far as I'm concerned, as far as my experience goes, walleye seem to do well in places with current, and um, also, not just current, but also, like, with places that actually have some depth. Now, the deepest part of that part that goes through town uh, on the sugar, the calm part is right below head gates. That place does actually have some current, but it's a very, very small area. Uh, that place does actually have current and it drops off to about nine feet deep, I believe. The Manesha, I mean, the whole Marshall Mill Pond area up to the dam doesn't really have that much current. It has a little bit, but not very much. And it's generally very shallow. I haven't really seen an area around that it's deeper than six or seven feet. Maybe there's like a deep area there somewhere that I just haven't explored because I haven't canoed it. But generally from what I see, like most of it's like three or four foot deep with no current. And it's not terribly well oxygenated like during the summer months. So I don't think walleye are going to um, basically survive that environment. That's why when they dump walleye in there, in, Manesha, in, in uh, kind of like the Manesha area, they never really see it again. And personally, I think it's kind of a waste to stock walleye in those regions because they just don't really survive. And realistically, I don't really see people catching them. Pike do tend to seem, do seem to do a lot better. I've caught a decent pike in both uh, the Manesha and the Sugar, the part that goes through town, and in Marshall Mill Pond. I've definitely caught bass, so bass do really well. Uh, both areas do have channel catfish. But here's kind of like a stocking idea if you want people to kind of like, you know, enjoy the fishing area there. Um, neither area has flatheads. And I think like if you just stock a combination of flatheads and bluegill, and you only really need to stock the flatheads like once or twice because they'll survive. Like flatheads do pretty good with like no current and in shallow areas as long as it doesn't completely freeze over. And they'll probably head like, you know, hide around head gates or like hide in whatever deeper parts of the Manesha in that area. I think like that's a winning stocking strategy because your continuance of stocking like walleye and maybe some other bait fish don't work because I've never, hardly ever seen them. And as long as you stock bluegill along with those flatheads, they'll have plenty to actually eat. The smaller bluegill will also provide forage for pike and uh, bass because I've caught a lot of pike on bluegills. And the bluegills will actually provide forage for walleye as well because I've caught, you know, in the lower parts of the sugar, I've caught plenty of walleye on bluegills as well. But I do think a stocking... Um, strategy in those particular areas, areas where it's fairly shallow, but it obviously doesn't freeze all the way down, uh, uh, only a little bit of current and just not very deep. I think stocking flatheads and bluegills is um, a better strategy because they'll survive and they do provide a lot of fishing fun. I mean, I might be biased because I fish for flatheads way more than walleye. Walleye just don't provide the same entertainment as flatheads because honestly, walleye are really poor fighters. They're not as big. And it's, it's not just that, it's just not that much of a thrill. Now, in terms of like um, stocking like non-native fish um, in those places, one, like they can't, like in the Manesha, you can't, the fish is going to have a really hard time um, going upstream or really downstream from Marshall Mill Pond because upstream, like it's a creek and it's a really small creek basically for the Manesha and realistically they're not going to go there. Downstream it's pretty small as well and plus like when you get further downstream like where the Manesha almost confluences with the crawfish, flatheads are native there anyway so they're actually native to the system. In terms of the sugar, um, I think flatheads were actually originally, uh, like before you made the dam and the spillaway, I think flatheads were actually originally um, native to that area because I know people have said to me they've seen like a few, like, a few smaller ones up 
near Minnehaha, and that's like upstream of the dam. And I, I've caught several downstream of the dam, so they're definitely native in that section of the river. It's just that like the dam kind of like stopped them from moving up or stopped many of them from moving up. So you're not really stalking like a non-native species of that river. I've seen them below the dam. I've still seen them below the spillway. People have said like they've caught small ones around Minnehaha, which is like upstream of the dam. And a couple of people I think have said like other people have actually put a couple of flatheads in like not very few. Probably you probably wouldn't be able to catch them uh, just above the dam as well. So... I mean, like, originally, I'm pretty sure before you built the dam, they were actually native to that area, and flatheads are native to that uh, river. So it's not like you're stalking a non-native species. And like I said, those kind of areas are just areas where, like, you know, like, channels do thrive in those areas, and I think flatheads would actually thrive as well. And as long as you stock enough bait like bluegills, I do actually believe that, uh, you know, that would actually provide for a lot of fishing fun in the future because people like reeling up 30 pound fish, at least sport fishermen do. Um, and realistically, like, bo like both the uh, Marshall Mill Pond and the, the part that goes through town, there are people that fish it, but I've been there multiple times and there's not that much fishing activity there because the fishing activity in those areas isn't great. Like a lot, most people don't like to stay deep into the night to fish for channel catfish. And you can fish for channel catfish elsewhere as well. But if they had flatheads, I would definitely go there more. And yes, I do buy bait at the local store, so it does help the economy. So like, you know, you gotta look at the water conditions and like what kind of habitat suits what kind of fish. In my opinion, like that race through town and the Marshall River, and, and like Marshall Mill Ponds, doesn't really suit walleyes or other fish that require like a fast moving current or like a fast moving current and deep water. Like walleye do well in the Wisconsin because it has fast moving water. Wisconsin, lower Wisconsin definitely is not very deep, but it has like deep pockets and it has fast moving water. Um, and if you look at other places with walleye, it's usually places with like decently moving current. And uh, that's just not what those places are. And there's and there's really no way you can introduce current in like Marshall Mill Pond because of the dam and also because of the spillway and broadhead. So and think about like trying, I've never seen people actually stock flatheads in an area of the river, uh, mainly because they're apex predators, but you're basically stocking a, a, a species of fish that was already present in that type of the river, at least for the sugar, before you built the dam. And I'm probably sure there's a couple in there anyways. There's just not that many. But, you know, like having a 40-pound fish in there, I think, would actually get some people or a lot of people fishing it. And as long as you stock it, like, with some bluegills and stuff or even with, like, fathead minnows, whatever minnows are native to that thing, uh, that area, I definitely think, like, uh, they could definitely survive. Because, like I said, like, channels do well in there. And I think flatheads will do well in there, too. It's just that the, the dams are actually stopping them from moving up because they were originally in that part of the river. And I think like the Manesha, as long as you like kind of stock it with bluegills and stuff, and there's plenty of forage in there already uh, with the amount of channels, I definitely think they'll do well in there uh, as well. Because for the Manesha River, like the river is actually really small besides the part at Marshall. So they'll probably stay in that area, one because of the dam and one because they can't really move upstream. And as long as they have enough forage, I think they'll do well. So let me know what you think about like, you know, let me know what you think about like, you know, stocking like, flatheads instead of stocking walleye in like those areas of the river because i feel like it's just a much much better choice so uh like and subscribe hit that bell notifications button and we'll get back with a another fishing adventure later